All right, good morning, Dr. Clark. Good morning. How will you be this morning? Just fine, thank you. I'm always <laughs> fine if the patients are fine. There you go. <laughs> and we have Sylvie over here. She's the the helper and uh, the laboratory helper and the patient helper. We're very fortunate to have her here. So what would you like to tell us this morning, Dr. Clark? Well, I'd like to show the progress for the jaundice cases. We only discussed one the first time, but I want to show how very similar jaundice cases are so that anybody uh, watching this could go right ahead and use it and be successful the very first time. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a great task. Uh, <clears throat> yes, but uh, it's, it's easier than um, trying to uh, fix uh, lung disease or or abdominal diseases, uh, jaundice is pretty straightforward. There were uh, there are really just two parts to it, but uh, I want to show uh, show uh, the the helper uh, what else there is to do because a um, liver cancer case to the point of uh, who's at the point of jaundice has other extremely disturbed um, organs and they need to be attended to. And so uh, we're going to go into that part uh, today so that we can see what the whole liver cancer case is really like. It'll be quite straightforward, in fact, uh, simple to put into effect as long as you have uh, dedicated people who will work around the clock if necessary, uh, and we'll see what would make it necessary. Mm -hmm. I think one of these persons has been cared for around the clock, isn't that right? Yes, it is. The other person gets sporadic care, mm -hmm. even though she is in what we consider critical care, mm -hmm. she doesn't have anybody with her at night, right? And, and, um, uh, so, so it's really a pretty easy thing to do on the whole. I think Genevieve's husband is there at night. Uh, doesn't he? I think oh, her her caregiver uh, is devoted and is there for the night. So, Doctor Clark is discussing the woman patient with the uh, severe liver problem, and here's Doctor Clark again. Thank you. Yes, the, the woman was told she didn't have any location in the liver that was without cancer. And uh, we saw uh, a scan of all that, and, and we could find some little spots, but not many. She did have a liver full of cancer, and here is how you cure that. That's what this video is about. Uh, and she ha has gotten to the uh, to the beginning of jaundice and the way that you notice that is off the blood test. The blood test is invaluable. You have to have it um, for a very advanced um, case, especially liver cancer, because the liver enzymes um, have to be correct or so that it shows you that the liver is working and not dying so quickly as to fill the blood with liver enzymes. Mm -hmm. uh, the certain bits of the liver, some cells, die all the time. And then you see the enzymes that were in them uh, just released into the blood, and there they are. There's the GGT and the... Um, LDH and the alkaline phosphatase and the AST and the ALT and did I say GGT already? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> those are the main ones and they must not go so high that you know the liver is dying very, very quickly. And the primary cause of this dying liver situation and the cancer is that's exactly, fungi? That's exactly why we're making this video. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as we know the cause, then we can remedy that, mm -hmm. cure it, in mm -hmm. fact. 
and get out of this predicament. Mm -hmm. I have seen uh, numbers as high as, as 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and the person was still alive, so we must not give up hope even when it arrives at 3,000. We just need to know what the cause is and, and then do the appropriate thing. Uh, synchrometer testing is just ideal for working on such emergencies because you get immediate results. I think that we started treating, uh, Sylvia, uh, didn't we start to treat the high LDH uh, two days ago for the woman? And, uh, and we started to treat the high alkaline phosphatase uh, also about the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in one day, uh, we got rid of the offending dyes. In each case, it was dyes, uh, azo dyes, mm -hmm. the ones that came with the Clorox water. Mm -hmm. They have accumulated uh, in the white blood cells and the red blood cells because they, that's how dyes behave. You never know just where they're going to accumulate and do their damage. But when you see a high LDH, you know that the dye Sudan Black has accumulated in the red blood cells, so they're not going to be very helpful to the patient. And if the white blood cells have accumulated DAB, D-A-B, the, the, the dye that was used for the yellow dye that was used to color margarine long ago. Mm -hmm. That one gets accumulated in the white blood cells and, and the white blood cells can free themselves of it, so then you have very crippled white blood cells, which is very, very crucial, of course, to the patient. And those, um, that dab is still available on the market and in our food, uh, perhaps? No, or it was taken it? off quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But why it is accumulated in all cancer patients is because we're drinking water that is toxic. Uh, the cancer patient is drinking water that's toxic because it has been disinfected with a variety of bleach that is inappropriate, not even legal. Which is basically laundry bleach rather than... Not USP oh, quality, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, most of the time, the patient has done, them, done this to themselves inadvertently, but the agencies have not given any guidance. None of the agencies perhaps even know the difference mm -hmm. between USP uh, disinfection of our drinking water and non-USP disinfection because they don't go to any, uh, make any effort to let uh, people like restaurant owners and the common public know that if they're in, uh, if they need to sterilize the cutlery or the tables uh, or glassware, that they need to use a particular kind of, of bleach, not just laundry bleach from the grocery store, mm -hmm. any variety. Mm -hmm. And there is how the big mistake gets made for cancer. The the non-USP kind is probably dug out of hillsides because there is so much to be made. They have to satisfy the entire population practically of the world, mm -hmm. certainly the U.S., because we all want to stay uh, clean and our clothes crisp and clean. So we are all bleaching our clothing and, and people uh, who are health conscious are trying to improve their water with filters added. Many, many different kinds of filters. But the agencies do not, the agencies I was talking about before, FDA and EPA, are not making any effort to tell the uh, makers of filters uh, that they should be using USP grade uh, Water, uh, 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 water that has been disinfected with USP grade um, bleach. Which is also called NSF? Yes. Is that, are those two terms yes. interchangeable? Yes, they are. Uh-huh, okay. 
because I'm more familiar with NSF and yes and the various laundry bleaches than I am USP yes. bleach. Fortunately, you can mm -hmm. now get NSF bleach on the uh, in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, you could in the past by going to a pool store, but you could only get a high concentration like 10% or 12%, whereas the public and we are used to 5 or 6%. Mm -hmm. And it's really pretty dangerous to have 10% or 12% bleach in the house. Yeah. I would not recommend it. Yeah. But now you can find 5% to 6% um, bleach in, uh, in the marketplace uh, if you search. And it's, it's deemed as sodium hypochloride. It's sodium hypochlorite. That's mm -hmm. the name of the bleach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the generic name of bleach. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that has been used. Uh, that that chemical has been used for close to a hundred years, I think, to mm -hmm. sanitize our water, our drinking water, mm -hmm. and and that has served us very well. The concept, and in general, the use of it. But when a USP quality and uh, no quality, non-USP quality, get mixed up and they get used um, without concern In our for water the difference. Supply. Yes, mm -hmm. that's how this terrible cancer debacle has arisen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, my books are an attempt to unconfuse um, to make clear the difference between those two kinds of water sanitation uh, and to hopefully uh, influence the agencies to make that separation clear and enforceable. Between the laundry bleach and the NSF? Between the NSF and the non-NSF. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the NSF can be used for laundry of course, mm -hmm. and that's what we should be using for mm -hmm. laundry, mm -hmm. because what is using in what is present in the non uh, NSF bleach that we're, that most of us are exposed to a great deal is PCBs, benzene, azodides, a long list, as many as I have in my set, and there for many more, and asbestos. Uh, I think the amount of asbestos in such water greatly outdoes what we would ever get from our ceilings or, or you know, household um, environments. environment, right. Mm -hmm. And also um, motor oil and, and wheel bearing grease, automotive greases in other mm -hmm. words, mm -hmm. and also a large number of heavy metals. So really, uh, the most dangerous thing in our food is not uh, some mercury in fish or detailed little things. The most dangerous thing is our water, especially if it has been filtered to try to improve it. Because the filters have the very bleach that is causing the problem. They're not aware of this. I'm sure, mm -hmm. but it would be so easy to correct for the household person. All the cancer cases that we have are using inadvertently that bad bleach, and therefore their bodies are detoxifying and detoxifying all those things in the water, and their organs are suffering, especially children whose kidneys can't detoxify that much and of course eventually when the body is no longer able to detoxify all these things then they have become amassed, they, be they get amassed into some organ either the lungs or the liver or some other organ and that is the organ that gets cancer. Mm -hmm.